Good morning, everyone. It's good morning out there. Happy Monday to you. I'm waving. I uh, hope you survived a rainy Sunday yesterday and that uh, all is well with you and your families this morning. I'm here in the art room. Uh, I've just actually spilled a couple of things that I'll have to pick up. My apologies, Mr. Burke, as I was trying to set up this little shot. Um, I'll explain anyway why I'm in the art room in just a bit. Um, two observations before we begin today. Um, I don't know if you have these little snapshots of what life amidst COVID-19 is like. I had one of them last night as my wife and I did a Zoom call with our two children in their 20s, one who's in Boston and the other is in New York. And their grandparents who live with us actually joined in, uh, joined in the Zoom call and I looked at the screen and I thought, wow, this is a whole new normal. Uh, grandpa at 91 trying to do Zoom, wild. Um, the other thing that struck me, I don't know if any of you, when you watch the local news, why do they still have a sports segment? There's no sports happening. It's beyond me. Anyway, just a little bit observation as we begin. So our prayer today is taken from a book of blessings by John O'Donohue. Some of you may know it. It's called To Bless the Space Between Us. Appropriate for today, To Bless the Space Between Us. And I'll read part of his blessing called A Morning Offering. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All that is eternal in me welcomes the wonder of this day. The field of brightness it creates, offering time for each thing to arise and illuminate. May my mind come alive today to the invisible geography that invites me to new frontiers, to break the dead shell of yesterdays, to risk being disturbed and challenged. May I have the courage today to live the life that I would love to postpone my dream no longer, but to do at last what I came here for and waste my heart on fear no more. May we welcome this day, come alive and take courage this day and be who we are called to be this day. We ask this each in his and her own way and I ask it in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so there's a few of you who are up early this morning. Some of you will be tuning in later today in terms of the coronavirus updates. You know, Italy, Spain, other countries and cities throughout the world. Uh, this, this is unprecedented, the losses that they are experiencing almost uh, beyond measure. Uh, here in our own country, uh, the president, as you know, has extended the social distancing recommendations throughout the month of April. The governor has requested a new major disaster declaration, I believe, that was approved. And the mayor of Boston um, has taken even more aggressive measures to prevent large gatherings in the city's parks. Um, and you're learning more about how different states even are you know, speaking of, of other people coming into those states and what measures they're trying to take as a precaution. Here in Essex County, so last Thursday when we met, the number of confirmed cases was 177. That was last Thursday. As of yesterday, it was 570. Okay, so you can just think about the, the geometric increase of that. There are no changes here, thankfully, at Fenwick. We have no confirmed cases, and there are no uh, members of our faculty, staff, family, students uh, involved with any quarantine, aside from all of us practicing good social distancing. Uh, so my message today, really quick, um, first to students, do your best to focus on your learning, okay? Much of what I just shared, totally beyond your control. In fact, it's beyond the control of most of us. So today, just try to focus on what you can control, your learning, your health, your family, your friendships. Focus on what you can control. Uh, particularly, I would like us to think about eight days, okay? Eight days. Let's keep the window short. Let's keep the horizon narrow. 
We have five days this week of virtual classes, three days the next week, and then we're into the uh, Easter holidays, uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Monday. And we will be taking a break from Zoom and virtual learning, at least for those Easter days. Um, we all are conscious of the amount of screen time uh, that we're having right now. That's not to say that you can't use those days over the Easter break to catch up on work or to stay current with other assignments. You may have lots of things that uh, can keep you occupied as you continue your learning here at Fenwick, but we're not gonna have online classes those days over Easter. So take the time you know, to take care of yourself and your loved ones and those closest to you, whether that's personally or relationally, even spiritually. So finally, I'm here in the art room. Born on this day, March 30th, 1853, a very famous artist who was actually not famous for most of his life. He has a very kind of, oh, I don't know, checkered past or intriguing history. Born this day, March 30th, Vincent van Gogh. Ironically, Van Gogh, who was poor for most of his life, is now uh, the author of masterpieces that are the most expensive in the world. And also ironically, on this day, in 1987, one of his most famous works sold for $39.7 million. $39.7 million. It's right here. No, 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 no. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's a beautiful piece, but that's not Van Gogh's. Uh, it's really nice. I don't know who it is. This day in 1987, sunflowers sold for that absurd amount of money. And as you know from Ms. Marquez's beautiful reflection last week, the sunflower has a special connection to Bishop Fenwick. For Van Gogh, Sunflowers apparently expressed gratitude. The Van Gogh Museum said that somehow Van Gogh said sunflowers, and the work, it's not just one painting, it's a series of some small works, communicated gratitude. Maybe sunflowers are innately grateful for the light, the warmth, the sun. After all, it's how they turn and it's why they rise. But gratitude for us, <clears throat> it's not always so innate. It's not always so natural. Often, maybe especially in times like these, we have to choose to be grateful. So let's be grateful today. Let's be grateful today for the opportunity to learn, to grow, and to be together, if only virtually, as we make our way through this. Finally, we're starting to share droplets of joy on social media, so please keep emailing me some of those photos. They're awesome. And then tune in tomorrow, we'll have a special announcement about how we at Bishop Fenwick are gonna launch a website, um, a page rather on our website to support each other through prayer. So uh, blessings on your day. Have a wonderful Monday. Take care and God bless.